Welcome to Retrained Search, the podcast, where we lift the lid on what it's really like to work retained, discuss the stories we've gathered along the way, and give you all a peek behind the scenes of our amazing community and how they're getting ahead. Hey, George. Hey, Lou. You all right? Welcome, everyone, to the Retrained Search podcast. What episode, what episode are we on now? <laughs> Absolutely no idea. No idea. There's been a few of them, though. Yeah. And more and more people are telling us that they're listening to the podcast, right? I know. I know. It's so insane. I was Mm. talking to an existing member of ours who's in the mastermind, and he said, I was talking to him about content and what what our plan is and what what we're going to be doing and how how we're going to be um, putting his together and stuff. And he was like, oh, yeah, I heard that on the podcast. (laughs) I was like... No way! Have you been listening to our podcast? And he goes, "Yeah." He said, "I saw it." And this guy's a really good podcaster. And I thought, I wonder what that's about. So I put put you in my ears while I went and raked leaves and unblocked drains and shit outside. <laughs> I only meant to listen to one. I listened to like four in a row, back to back. So it can't be that bad for those of you that are listening. Well, you're still here, so you must be doing something right, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So how are you doing, George? I'm all right. Um, I'm j- I keep muting myself because a van that just pulled up outside my oh, house. Oh, no. Which I assume means they're about to knock, which I assume means the dog is about to rain all hell yeah. on that front door. Or but, it could be the so, window cleaner, and then that would be Yeah, but so far, we're so good. Maybe he's just parked outside my house, but he's going to a different house. So, <laughs> no, I can hear it happening. It's all right. It's <laughs> Do you fine. Need to as go? long as you guys can't, that's all that matters. No, don't worry about I, it. I can We're hear good. him in the background, but I don't mind Milo. It doesn't bother me. Okay. He'll stop in a second, I hope. Um, so we are you yeah. just about we we were just about to launch into a whole conversation and then I said we need to hit record because I just said to George, he said, How are you? And I went, I'm really busy. And yeah. I was still like inhaling the rest of my lunch while I said it. And then mm. um, and you said well, yeah, I've just been, um, I looked at my diary, so I go away, I'm on holiday next week, I'm going to Mallorca, and I needed a pair of jeans altered. And I looked at my diary, and I was like, I've got an hour's gap, and I think this is it, like, this is the hour, if it doesn't happen in this hour, that's it. So I had to go to the Trafford Centre, which is like a massive shopping mall near my house. Mal, how American was mal. that? And a uh, shopping centre, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's probably 20 minutes away. So I had a 14-minute round trip with 20 minutes in between to get the jeans given, altered, measured, so on and so on. So I went to the traffic centre, which is a busy place. It's and massive, I thought, I haven't, well. got time to, I haven't got time to put the jeans on when I'm there. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go in the jeans so they can just alter them. I can throw a pair of shorts on after it and I'm done, I'm out. And I didn't think about where I was parking. And I parked at the complete opposite end of the traffic centre to this shop and walked through looking like I'd just been scraped up off the streets. I had these jeans round my ass, like having to hold them up because I hadn't took a belt with me. I had no I had no socks on with my shoes. Oh, oh it was some of the looks I got. It was absolutely horrendous. But the jeans are giving in. I'm back in time. I don't know when I'm going to pick them up, but no, hmm, we'll figure that Maybe one out as we go. Okay, good. Um, Well, I'm glad you're as busy as I am, because I just don't even have time to go to the bathroom at the moment, so I'm having the same problem. (laughs) I've got like... Sarah and Charlie were were at our house yesterday. We're at my house. We had like a co-working day. And I think they arrived at about 10. They left at about 5. And I think I spoke to them for a total of three minutes (laughs) throughout the day. All right, I'm on another call. Bye. See you later. Help yourself to coffee and tea and whatever. They did, they did well, yeah. though, didn't they? They got yeah. loads of stuff done. Did they, they get did. to cuddle they the did. baby? No, oh. the baby wasn't oh. here. Um, uh, Charlie saw the baby, first thing, and then uh, Becca was out for the day. She had her appointments and nails and all that all that yeah. woman stuff. Well, 21st century now, all men. Yes. Men can get the nails done as well. You get your nails done. Um, no, I don't. I don't. I've got work workers' hands from all the tennis I play. <laughs> I was going to say, you have not Manly got workers' hands. hands. You wouldn't go near hard bloody grass labour like no. that, would you? Yeah, you no. trainers, don't you? No, I moisturise. I moisturise. Don't get me involved in any of that manual labour no, rubbish. Don't blame. I've, I've moved away from it myself. Um, right, so we are going to talk first about what we've been helping people with. What So, George, like, what have you been up to? I've been away. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. Oh, really? Okay. Well, tell us about that. You were, um, yeah. you were, you were, 
honoured, right, to be invited to speak to know, a yeah. pretty um, it's special the audience. Pinnacle Society. For those of you that don't know, it's a group of recruiters that's been around for quite a while. It's like 25 years, I think, they've been established. And they're a group of top billing recruiters in the US mainly. And I think mm. the original requirement was you had to be a million dollar biller three years in a row in order to be allowed in. And I think the barrier to entry is a little bit lower now. I think you have to be half a million dollars a year, three years in a row. To, don't quote me on that, though. But it's something. It's like a long those things. Yeah. It, but listen, it's, it's impressive numbers, yeah, right? Yeah, You've got yeah. to be posting to be um, a part of the And they the have a group. conference every year, I think. And they invited me to come and speak at it, which was uh, an honour and a privilege, mainly because the majority of them are contingent. Some are retained, but the majority are mainly contingent. And there are quite a lot in there that want to get better at retained. So I went over to Savannah in, I didn't mm. actually know where Savannah was. Um, I'll, yeah, come clean. I thought it was in Nevada. So that's awful, isn't it? My American geography is not good enough. Despite the fact that I lived over there for yeah, um, I mean, several years. Um, but it turns out yeah, it's in Georgia, I think you're probably, near the Carolinas. Um... And I have been to the Carolinas before. Mm. Um, and it was awesome. It was so good to meet a group of really dynamic and impressive uh, recruiters and even more awesome and humbling to know that they want to learn and they want to find out more and they want to develop and they want to progress yeah. and retained is a big topic for them because this year has been quite difficult for a lot of them and is and still is actually overhearing a lot of the conversations that revenue is down uh, for some people and they're still getting back to where mm. they were pre uh, crash um, early, earlier this year and back in the last year. Uh, but it was great. Did you know that Savannah is the most haunted city mm. in the world currently? I didn't. Um, what I love is that you totally brushed over the fact that when you said, I didn't know where Savannah was, I thought it was in Nevada. <laughs> you are literally two <laughs> opposite ends of the Sorry. United States of America. Like, if, I, if my geography is right, Nevada is like very much West Coast. And Georgia is very yeah. much East Coast. Yeah, so you're only about a town of flight probably out. Not far off. In my defence, in my defence, in my defence, I oh. was originally yeah. asked to speak at one of their conferences that that was in Nebraska. Nebraska's in Nevada, right? Okay. Oh, right. Don't know. Don't think so. I'm I so be, sorry. I don't, I don't know. I don't. Anyway, doesn't matter. You just go on to Sky Scanner, yeah, put the place in, book the flights, and get off the plane, right? But I'll tell you, one thing that does, one thing I find interesting, Lou, is I often think when you look at these mega billers, right, what is it that separates them? And I wonder whether that mindset is one of the things, the fact that even though they are at their pinnacle, excuse the pun, there is a constant desire to improve, to get better, and appreciation yeah, yeah, that I they do, don't know do everything. I mean, yeah, I do think I do think that's a big part of it. I also think, and it came up in the conference, that they're amongst pretty much everybody in there, and I see it with you, with me, and with members of our team as well, is there's a massive fear of failure. Mm. And they talked about it mm. and how it drives most of the people. Um, and I only learned, actually, I mean, this is totally like sideways but i only learned recently that apparently Mac michael mcintyre has a massive fear of not being financially secure and that's what drives him but i think a lot of us that are successful are driven by that that uh, fear mm -hmm. of, of failing and uh, but weirdly i think in a way what's happened with a lot of the people there is that same fear of failing has prevented them from selling retained yeah do you remember the yeah i can um, see that conversation we had with the lady who was a top biller in Canada and she had exactly the same thing she was like 1.2 1.5 mil all contingent and only delivers delivered on everything but only won't sell retain because she's terrified that she won't deliver it so anyway there you go yeah. and a lot of yeah. them are, haven't haven't done retained work and when I started to share the concepts and what it really is and how it isn't about promising to find the perfect candidate and all those things they were like Ooh, mind blown so that was pretty cool um and yeah we had a lot of fun had a bit of it, jet lag, but, but again isn't you know, it funny right because 
I remember when um, I first did this training and there was probably a fear of failure with me as well. Like I'm scared to sell it because what if I can't deliver on it? And actually over time, my mindset shifted completely that I was scared to work it contingently because I knew that that was what gave me the biggest chance of failure. Because if I worked it contingently, I couldn't apply the time, I couldn't apply the resource, I couldn't apply the process that was needed to mm -hmm. as near as damn it yeah. guarantee success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you get to the stage where yeah. it's the only way. It's the only way that I know I'm gonna be able to to deliver a result. Mm. And I mean we we end up um we could talk all day about it, can't we? But you end, you know, you get to the stage where you're so confident in your process and the process that you're going to apply that come hell or high water, you will, you will reach a result and, and the best result that's available to everybody. Um, yeah. But that's where your process comes in. And that's why yeah. people that are coming from a contingent background that are trying to sell retain that don't know what that process is or needs to be like stumble with it. And then either screw it up or just stay away from it because they think, Oh, what if I win it and then fuck it up? So a massive part of what we teach to sell mm. is all about delivery. It's all about how you make sure that you reach a result on the project. And that's where the confidence comes, of course, to sell it, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's intrinsically yeah, linked, totally. isn't it? The sale and, and, and the um, delivery. So that's me. I've been um, traveling mm. the world. What about you, George? What have you been up to? Not been traveling the world. I've been in my six foot by six foot office, um, but I've been helping people. Um, yeah, it's been a great couple of weeks. One of one of the big talking points that it's kind of funny. It's funny, isn't it? How there is so often themes and trends. And the minute somebody asks a question about one particular area, you find out that so many others of our members have been thinking about the same thing and facing the same challenges. And one of the big things that's been a topic of conversation is around specking out candidates. Yeah, I think NPCs. often in the States, especially they're called mm -hmm. what, NPCs, is it? M most placeable candidates. Um, and I think one of the fears with specking out candidates is often people think it's a very contingent way of developing business. And the winning retain business should be some sexy process. It should be smooth and... You know, it should be really complex and technical. But actually, over time, what I found is that some of the best ways of developing new business, they're the ways that I was taught in my first three weeks of contingent recruitment. One of the first mm -hmm. things I was taught to do was spec out candidates, right? Now, I'm not saying if I were to spec out a candidate now, I'd do it in the same way that I did it seven or eight years ago, right? Like, it's, it's much more sophisticated. But there is huge opportunity to demonstrate capability, credibility, to show your network that you mm. engage with the right caliber of talent, that you have a strong network, you know what good looks like when it comes to talent. And it is absolutely possible to flip a speculative CV, absolutely a speculative introduction possible. into it's a retained search. Fact. And um, it, it yeah. brings me to either remind you or our audience of... Uh, something we shared, I think it was last week, where one of our mastermind members has won his first CEO search on the back of a, a send out, I think some people call it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that was fully retained, 30%, third, a third, a third, his first ever CEO search. Um, it doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be um, elaborate. It, it can be quite straightforward, but there are certain things mm. that you need to make sure that you're doing that you wouldn't do when you're when you're doing it on a contingent basis and, and the key is the conversation that you have with the client once they bite on that if they're if they're potentially interested in it because you can mm. very easily get sucked into just working should we get should, should we should we give the listeners a sneak preview into that conversation what do you think yeah just a, i think so. just a snippet i think so and um, basically what you need to do is yeah you need to get on a call with them. I mean, that's the first thing. And you would do that contingently anyway, wouldn't you, right? You wouldn't send a candidate in blind. Yeah. Um, you know, what are they actually looking for? Because yeah. the important thing is, if if what they're looking for is it's just somebody and, you know, anybody will do, then you might as well take your chances with 
with seeing the candidate and they're probably just going to carry on just accepting mm. random people that are being you know dumped in their inbox or or shared speculatively yeah yeah and you might, listen, you might get the odd quick win, win from what, that right if what they want to do is just interview cool. the candidate and make the hire well then that's yeah. fine no problem um the problem is that if they interview that candidate and they don't they're, they're not a fit and actually they want to find the right fit and that person won't do then they start to look for other people to compare or contrast or as a an ad firstly that candidate will know exactly what's happening so you'll lose that candidate so you won't be able to keep that candidate warm while you then go back to market and start interviewing because they always know what what you're doing and secondly if that then next candidate doesn't turn out to be a fit you're then back to the drawing board again um what I and let's remember the candidate you're sending in hasn't been assessed against their brief because you've just randomly made an introduction. So they've not been assessed against the brief mm. functionally, behaviorally. Yeah. You don't even know whether they're really interested in the position or whether they would even accept it if they were offered it, because that's yeah. not how you know they've been found as a result of another search. And that's key too. This candidate has been found yeah. as a result of a search we've kept yeah, executed correct. for somebody else. So if they don't turn out to be fit, to be a fit, which is possible quite possible in fact can you ever remember i mean it isn't very often you place the candidate that you spec in is it i quite often found that it wasn't very rare isn't it it's like gold dust um, on that anyway if um, if they yeah. don't turn out to be a fit and um they do need to find somebody then what i normally suggest we do is launch the search in the background go ahead and interview this candidate but let's launch the search in the background and that way if this candidate turns out to be a fit that's fine um make the offer we'll simply bill the lump sum that would have been would have been billed minus the retainer that you pay so you're not going to pay any more but if they don't turn out to be a fit because we've we're working in partnership with you we'll be well underway with the search and we'll have a short list of candidates for you to move forward with you won't have lost any time and because we're working with you in partnership on a retained basis, we'll work with you to make sure that we reach a result. So that's what I normally do when I'm speculatively introducing candidates. Cool. So nice. um, we were then nice. going to have, yeah, share some of the stuff that's been happening. A lot, I did hear while I was away, I heard a lot of people say in the market. In fact, I've only heard this morning on a couple of calls that on a couple of sales calls, people say in the market shit. Um, which is sad for me to hear because some people are doing really well. And um, I was going to share some of the good things because that's nice to have yeah. some good news. It's happening, yeah. And you know, it is funny, Lou, isn't it? It's like, it is like a tap. Like the, the, the people that I'm hearing now say the market isn't great are the people that three or four months ago were saying, actually, my market seems to be all right. And the people that three or four months ago were telling me, the market isn't great and I'm struggling and now telling me I'm seeing green shoots and things are picking up and I'm winning retained business again. Okay. So um, let's share some of that good news. So uh, this is one of our newer members. Um, I don't know that I've read this fully yet. Uh, what does he say? He says, hi, Louise. Yeah. No, he's, he's, yeah, he's new, right? He's been with um, us a couple of weeks. Um, right, that's just it. a quick note to let you know, I'm really enjoying the program. And I've not scratched the surface yet. I'm not saying I've won my first project. But having come off a meeting with a client this morning, implementing your approach and teachings, I walked away like I've not done for a long time. In capital letters, it felt fantastic. Hmm. Identifying pain points and realizing retained was the way to go without using the word retained, which I always used to do before. Go. Even the client said before, and he said that, by the way, not me, for those of you listening. He's written that in his, <laughs> um, I'm not saying that about him. He said it about himself. Even the client said before ending the VC, no, I like it all. We don't need to speak with anyone else. Let's get on with it. I'll introduce you to another colleague and we'll get the ball rolling. I'm hoping we land it because there are three leadership roles there. And I said I'd get a proposal to it. I've known him for years and I'd hate objections to come along in the way. Based on what your program teaches, I know it's important to have another meeting with the client and the stakeholders to go through the proposal and cover it this way instead of emailing it to them and waiting for their feedback. Woohoo! Each way, um, either way, I'll try to nail it and bring it home. I wanted to give you this feedback because it's a wonderful thing you're doing for the community and I look forward to continued learning. Oh, that's so nice. Well done. No, no, isn't it good? I'm going to cry here. Here's another one. I like the title of this one. 
uh, from CJ. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a boom in big letters. Lou, I just used the verbiage. Boom. Verbiage? Ver verbiage? Verbiage? Verbiage. Verbiage. <laughs> Verbage. Very American. From retrained. From retrained. Oh my god, what's happening to me today? Verbiage. I swear it's the jet lag. I'm going to break. I'm blaming the jet lag like Harriet did. Um, I just used the verbiage from retrained on a client pitch call, and we got the search at thirty percent retained. Magical, she said. Thank you again. Looking forward to telling you more fun stories. Smiley face. I also sent a mini deck as I was talking, which I referenced. Good girl. Good girl. And here's another one. Go on. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to say, um, I'll take the magical no, it's shout. Magical. Um, it's actually not magical. Like, no, you, don't. you can do it. It's pretty straightforward. You don't yeah, need to be a wizard. Just, you just yep, need yep, to be yep. shown how. Um, and then you can do it. What's this one? Oh, yeah. So I was on a coaching call uh, with one of our very, very, very new members, literally joined. I think she's in her third coaching call now. Uh, so matter of what, two weeks, three weeks is that? And one of her fellow members was saying, wow, that was a great pitch. I loved it. Well done. And she said, thank you. I thought everyone smashed it. And they did, but yeah, she did pretty well. She says um, she had a pitch with a client that afternoon. And so she was practicing ready for that. And she said, I've just left my pitch. They are keen to progress. But as it's not how they've worked before, we need a yes from the CEO, exclamation mark. So a follow-up meeting is booked in with him on Monday afternoon to present again. So she's already on the cusp of winning her first project. And I'm well shocked. Nice. She's doing so well. Mm. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And that's normal. We've talked about that before, haven't we, Liz? Yes. Like that's normal, having yeah. to yeah. pitch and twice don't need to, to be different worried stakeholders about it. within like, the same business. Just keep keep going um, and just resist the urge to send things to them for them to pitch it internally. Mm. And yes, of course, it takes a bit longer than a contingent. Okay, I have that job, but you, it's worth it. Believe me. <laughs> believe us when we tell you it's worth it. Um, what's this yeah. one? Mick Greenlick Grosen is going to be German. Hey, Louise. It's been a few weeks now since I signed up with the course and already have four retainers in. Oh, yes. Bloody hell, I remember. I don't think he is German, though, is he? I think maybe he's just in Germany at the moment. He is uh, one of our guys that travels around quite a lot and is a... Um, I mean, some of them call them like no-bad recruiters, don't they? And I like the sound of that. Uh, he, he's doing a great job. So only a few weeks in, he's already won for us. Mm. Thank you for providing such a great and extensive training course. He said, yeah, good luck mm. for them. Not bad. Good job. Um, I think that is it. Yeah. Mm. That's why we're sharing it is good possible, news. Guys. Even in this market that it some is. people are finding quite difficult, it's still possible to win your work on a retained basis. Well, do you know what? No, no excuses, right? Like go back to what we were talking about earlier with the pinnacle guys that you were with last week, Lou. Mm. That fear of failure, that drive to constantly evolve and get better. In every market, there are winners and losers. You know, mm, I would I like do that. everything within your power to make sure you're a winner. I like that. Um, we should have saved that for the minute on mindset. Maybe that can be our minute on mindset. Yeah, yeah we should. Yeah, well, maybe that, that was, yeah. Um, More like 20 seconds, but... see anything controversial in your travels recently <sighs> on LinkedIn or anything that um, you didn't agree with? <sighs> Do you know what I thought we could do? I thought, and, and, and this isn't me, um, when we talk about the LinkedIn controversies or anything we've seen on LinkedIn, I thought we could just talk for a minute about we had a wonderful yes, session for our members with David Wollstonehome, didn't we, yesterday at Brand Me Better, talking all things organic personal branding. Oh. Um, what were your main takeaways from that, though? I thought we could maybe just share the odd snippet of what was discussed on that on that session what were my main takeaways uh, one of the things that i wish i had done and I, will I, I, do I lost you i didn't hear any of it would have done had i known <laughs> is so simple but just commenting on your target prospects content you know, the, know what the biggest thing i took away from it was and it's a bit like do you ever watch um do you ever watch dragon's den like so occasionally someone comes on dragon's den with an idea right and it's so simple and straightforward. 
right? And it solves a huge problem. And you sit there and go, oh, shit, yeah, that, like, why has nobody ever thought to do that? How easy is that? Yeah. <laughs> and Dave made the point about, someone had asked him, what should I be it's posting? So like, what should I be talking about? And he said, well, ask your customers. Yeah. Like, speak to your customers and say, what do you want me to talk <laughs> about? Like, what's interesting? What's, what troubles are you facing? What are you struggling with? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Because one of the things that he does, like at the beginning of his program, because we've done the program with him, so we know, is he actually goes to your customers and asks them, how are you perceived? What do they love about you and your brand? What don't they love about yeah. it? What do they want to see more of from you? What don't they want to see from you? And it's fucking unreal. It's so powerful. And they're all questions that I suppose you'd be too scared to ask yourself in in a lot of ways, mm. some of those things would be because you're really exposing yourself, <laughs> aren't you, by asking those questions directly of your customer. But but there's nothing to stop you from asking the easier ones, like what do you want to see more from me? What don't you want to see from me? Like why why try and guess what they want to consume? Why not just fucking ask them? It's so straightforward. I love him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. He's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. For anyone listening, that is a guy called David mm. Wollstonehome. Mm. He's based in Sydney, Australia. And he really is, is isn't it? an expert in branding, personal yeah, he is. business branding, and We're the very programs lucky, that he yeah. does are phenomenal. Yeah, good point. Good point, George. And will we finish with a minute on mindset? I think my message is what I, one of the things that just kept coming up with the people in, in Savannah and the group that I've just spent some time with, and that is your, what you perceive retained search to be probably isn't what it is what you think you're going to have to do and what you think you're committing to probably isn't isn't actually what your your you will have to do to be able to to win your work on a retained basis there was just this massive preconception that you take the retainer and then it's a ball and chain and you have to find the perfect candidate and all of them we're terrified of that and it's no reason that they've stayed away from it but it's just not mm. true that isn't that isn't it that isn't it so that's my Have we talked about the uber today. analogy before like, on the podcast you... we have actually have we? yeah we have yeah we have but we will again but not right now because i don't want to overcomplicate mm. that yeah just wanting people to to realize that all the things that you think because i've just come off a call with a guy very experienced guy in hong kong he's um dealing with very senior positions in um in governance and um and legal and compliance in hong kong you know vp and above he's only got one percent of his work on a retained basis he's got a team it should be more and the thing that's stopping him is he's got this massive preconceived idea that a only the shrek firms can win retained work only the sophisticated search firms can do it and it's only done at senior levels wrong i.e c-suite even more senior and that's not true that his clients won't buy it Wrong. his clients won't buy it below the c-suite and we know firsthand every fucking day from people winning projects below that level all over the bloody world that that's not true and that he, if he takes the retainer, he has to then find the perfect candidate and he's terrified that they don't, if they don't exist, then he's fucked his relationship with the client. Mm. And that's not true either. No, it really so isn't. So that is my big message to you. All the things that you think you think it is, mm. it probably isn't. So yeah. if you want, yeah, like if you want to find out what it actually is and how to actually apply it in a way that, that makes sense and works for you and your clients and your candidates, then we'd like to talk to you Mm. even if we just have a chat with you and diagnose what's holding you back and that is the key to unlocking you to be able to do it we're happy to do that yeah we just we just have free 45 minutes with you and chat to you about it and let us help as many people as possible so to do that by the way i'm not sure whether there's a link somewhere near this um podcast that you can yeah you can find it on the website right as well Lou. And, so. and if and if you do want to know what the uber analogy is you can either book a call with us we'll be happy to tell you <laughs> or um you can go back and listen to every other episode of the podcast and you can find it yourself yeah
yeah yeah and we will share it again because it is a very very good one all right on that note thank we'll you, love you and leave you all until the next time thank you jordan see you soon lots of love i'm glad you got your jeans sorted see you not soon. sorted yet wait till i go and turn up and they're like they're like three quarters now instead because they've altered them wrong <laughs> i hope oh, that's we'll not see. the case we'll see well that's another episode of retrain search the podcast in the bag thanks for listening to our wild tales linkedin controversies and our top tips on how to sell and deliver retained search get involved in our next episode send in your questions and share your experiences with us by emailing podcast at retrainsearch.com and don't be shy connect with us on linkedin and come and say hi we don't bite unless you're a shrek firm that is We want to say a special thank you to our retrained members for sharing what's working for them right now and innovating new ways to grow and evolve. It's an incredible community. If you're wondering what exactly we mean when we mention our communities, well, we have two separate programs. Our Search Foundations program is for recruiters who want to learn how to sell and deliver retained search solutions consistently. And we have our Search Mastery Programme. That's for business leaders or owners already at 50% retained or more and looking to scale and grow and structure their search firm. We cap memberships to these programmes to protect the integrity of the community. If you want access, just talk to us. Okay, thanks for listening. We'll be back very soon with another episode of Retrain Search, the podcast.